All right. This is Felix the Fox. As you can see, he has many different symbols. He's got arms, legs, a torso, a tail, different hands, and different perspectives of the character. We're going to start with just using the head. So I'm going to take this front view of him. As you can see, he's already been symbolized. So I'm going to double click, and now you can see there's a lot more symbols to get together with him. And I'm going to double click again inside of his head. And up in the timeline, you can see his different features. Eyebrows, nose, mouth jaw, eye blinks, pupils, and his head, which has not been labeled that. <laughs> Easily remedied by double clicking on the name and saying head. I always find it easier to know what I'm actually looking at. As you can see, the different layers can be locked as well, and you can actually hide them from sight as well, separately or all together. I'm just going to unlock them all so I can use these layers. You can also make them transparent. It's easier when you're trying to focus on a symbol that's hiding behind another. So I'm going to use my zoom tool and get a little closer to him. All right. And each of these frames is actually a different position for his head. As you can see, he's got different mouth sets, so he can actually talk. He's got three different types of eyebrows as well. It's usual. Eye rise and some angry ones. All right. And so when you're animating using these, you will be using them separately from inside the tool head. And I can grab his pupil, and I can move him around that way. <laughs> and focus on which mouse set to actually use for him. This puppet's actually not fully complete, as you could tell, because his ear is actually fully connected to the head, meaning we can't actually animate his ear separately. But I'm going to fix that by double clicking into his head, and I'm going to select his ear. I'm going to use the lasso tool. Carefully cut around his ear and ensure I actually got the full ear. And I'm going to go to right click and cut out the ear. Take my tool and come back outside of his head. And I'm going to create a new layer. The new layer option is down here. Just hit new layer. And now we got layer 9. And I'm going to paste that there. So now I've got his ear. But I want it symbolized so I can actually animate it without affecting the original image. So right click, convert to symbol. And I'm going to call it Felix Ear. These puppets now, we actually have another feature to focus on when using the symbol, and that is the pivot point, which is represented by this circle here and the plus. As you can see, the pivot point's in the center of his ear, so if we took our free transform tool, it would be rotating from there. I want it to actually rotate, so double click and go into the form. I'm going to raise this over here so that the pivot point, which is also represented by this plus, is at the edge of his ear. So I'm going to double click outside of his ear, and now his pivot point is in the proper spot. So it rotates from there instead. And now I'm going to reposition it back to where it belongs. All right, it's going to take a little bit more cleaning up. As you can see, it's got little spots where it should not. And it also breaks away from the head. 
too easily. That's the more difficult part to these symbols is making them work properly. So I'm going to take the orange color. And I'm going to draw out some more of his ear. Straighten his ear up some. For the most part, these puppets are pre-finished, so you sh shouldn't ever need to do this. But if ever I do have a point where the puppet tries to break on you or needs these minor adjustments, it's always good to know how to fix them. So I'm going to double-click outside of the ear again. And as you can see, now it's in front of his head. So I'm going to actually go up to Layers again. I'm going to rename that Ear. and reposition the layer itself by clicking and holding it and pulling it under the head. So now it's back to its proper place. Now if I click my transform tool, I can turn his ear. Just like so. And that is how you edit a image inside of a symbol. And I could go through and add different symbols as well. In fact, the mouth symbol is actually improperly made inside this symbol. As you can see, the mouth has all of its different shapes outside instead of inside the symbol. So if I was trying to animate a specific choice, I'd have to be copying and pasting each of these frames over and over and over. But I like to try to narrow the work for that by selecting both mouth and jaw, since those usually work together. <laughs> I'm going to copy and paste all these frames. So copy frames. And I'm going over to this one, and I'm going to say convert. I just took the first jaw symbol and I'm going to change it to Felix's mouth. I'm going to double click into the mouth and paste frames. Double click outside of it, and I'm going to realign it to its proper place. This one is actually now Felix's mouth. So that the jaw and the, the different frames for the mouths are all together in one spot. They still exist, as you can see, but now we can do some more different animation on the outside of the frames. It makes it so much easier to be able to move them side to side without having to move each and every individual frame. As with the nose, it's set right now. If I move it from this fr over here, it goes back to the other place because I didn't move it from the other frame. All right, the last thing about it animating a head is to keep in mind that when we add audio, the audio, the, all the symbols in the head should always match up with the audio stream. So first we'll start with add another layer. I'm going to rename that one audio. And we would add the audio into that layer. In this, for example, say we had a 9.5 
second audio stream. We would need the audio layer to actually reach out to 9.5, which would be 115. As we got shown set up in the outside of the head. If we don't set the audio out to 115 inside the head, then the head will wind up looping its play upon those first 30 frames it has in there. Thus, if Felix was trying to say his name, he would probably be only say an I am over and over. So inside the frame, we always have to make sure the audio and the symbols match up. 115 each in this case. And then from there, we could animate the mouth accordingly. All right, when we're animating the mouth and other symbols that include multiple frames within the symbol, we use the properties to control which frame appears when. So for the mouth, we have looping options. Right now we have single frame, which is usually what we use for the mouth sequences. But the other options we have, by default, it is usually placed on loop which allows it to play through those frames. So in this case, it would play through 1 through 27 over and over until the end of the animation at 115. Single play, it would only play through the 27 frames and then it will stop and it will hold on to the 27. So in this case, we'll be using single frame first. So at frame one, we got single frame and it's gonna stay. Here we can decide which frame it decides it wants to be. One is closed mouth, two is A. We got E for three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm gonna put it at five. And it's going to stay at 5 until I tell it otherwise. So at frame 15, let's add another keyframe. We'll select the symbol again that we want to adjust. And I'm going to say play once. And from frame 11, it will play until 27, since that's all there is within that symbol. If I want it beyond 27, I'd have to put turn it to loop or add more frames within the symbol. So I'll put it all the way there, and let's have it 45. We'll tell it to actually go back to frame one and stay. With single framing and first frame is one. That is how you use the properties panel to control which frame a symbol is using. Other symbols have the same options. There are times where legs or arms might have different perspectives of the limb. Hands are also a good one that changes constantly on that. And so when we click back out, we will play until he's told otherwise. And that's how you animate a head.